，你好，欢迎再次来到 TVBS 大师讲堂，我是夏家璐。在上一次，我们邀请了中研院院士陈培哲教授，主要是针对了 COVID-19 的病毒啊，病毒为什么变异啊，疫苗是怎么研发出来的，以及疫苗为什么可以帮助我们产生抗体等等来开讲。那在今天呢，我们是跨海邀请了一位大师，会更多来针对目前在国际上最新有关于疫苗啊、抗体，甚至是治疗药物方面的研究进度，还有在未来可能的。发展要带我们大家会有更多更进一步的认识，所以一起来欢迎在今天邀请的美国哥伦比亚大学教授何大一何博士，你好，夏小姐你好。博士晚安哦，博士现在在美国东岸的时间，有跟我们刚好是日夜颠倒。博士现在在美国，目前我们了解到的疫情其实已经舒缓许多了嘛？是。不是我们大家比较认识跟了解的是，您在九零年代就发明了艾滋病毒的鸡尾酒疗法。那我们也知道，现在您也带领了在哥伦比亚大学的一个医学团队，持续针对 COVID-19 的一些疫苗啊开发研究，也持续都在进行当中。那在台湾，其实一般政府啊对民众的呼吁就是，只要你打得到的疫苗都是好疫苗。不过现在我们所了解到，市面上像 Moderna、Pfizer、BNT， 或者是像在台湾自己有高端疫苗，还有像 AZ 疫苗，还是有很多不同的这个。保护的机制跟这个抗体产生的方式，所以民众还是很想了解，在这些不同的疫苗之间，到底有没有什么比较好、比较坏，或者是有没有什么是比较有效的？它的有效性差别会很大吗？想要首先先请教一下博士。Okay, well, first of all, thank you for having me on your program. It's a real pleasure to be with you this evening. Um, I would just say a few things about our own research first. And that is, we've been focusing on the development of monoclonal antibodies, Danzu Kanti, and we have developed over 350 such antibody, and one of them is already in development as a product. But more recently, we have、uh, identified antibodies that are very, very broad in neutralizing not just the COVID virus variants that we face today, but also the SARS virus. And many other related viruses in animals, particularly in bats. The other research area for my group is we're studying antibody responses, how they come up in、uh, as part of vaccination, and how they then decline in time, how they act on the different variants of COVID-19、uh, virus, and how they respond、uh, to boosts and how they correlate. With protection against disease. In terms of the vaccines, is that's obviously great news that we have so many vaccines already in such short period of time. Of course, we all know what、uh, losses we have gone through with a quarter of a billion infections worldwide already, and over five million deaths, and we're still adding half a million new cases each day. And where I live in the U.S., we still have 72,000 cases per day, and about 1,000 deaths. And the winter is coming, so we expect the situation、uh, to worsen. Hopefully, not as bad as the previous year. But the vaccines and drugs and antibodies are going to make a huge difference. We know that these drugs and antibodies could lower death and hospitalization. By 90 percent, and the vaccines are variable in their effectiveness, ranging from about 50 percent all the way up to 95 percent. So, not all vaccines are equal. There are some that are clearly better than others, and this is one aspect that my laboratory has been studying for a long time. And I would say, based on the antibody measurements and based on protection against disease in、uh, in clinical trials. It is pretty clear that the mRNA vaccines made by either Moderna or Pfizer are superior to the vaccines made by Johnson and Johnson, which in turn、uh, is superior to that made by AstraZeneca. And then probably、uh, coming in at last are the inactivated vaccines made in mainland China or in India. So I, I would say. Uh, the clear winner so far would be the Moderna or Pfizer vaccines. 
，所以不同的疫苗在保护力上还是有一些差别。尤其刚才在不是呃谈到了，接下来又面临到了秋冬这样的季节，那持续的对于疫情的变化还是必须要保持高度的关注。还有一点就是，我们都知道病毒一直在变异哦，那每一次变异呢，传染力也其实都更厉害，像甚至甚至这个 Delta 还有 Delta 又在变异出来一个新的一个病毒株。所以就目前呃，博士您所了解，我们到现在所开发出来的疫苗。即使说保护力比较强的 mRNA 疫苗，在面对不断变异的病毒，它在保护力上是不是还是有一些大家会比较担心的地方？那在未来哦，生技医学界要怎么样再去有更多的研发，或者有一些什么样的方式来面对像这样子病毒不断变异的挑战 ？Yes,、uh, we we have gone through. The emergence of many different variants over the past year.、Uh, last summer, we saw the initial appearance of alpha and beta variants,、uh, and the alpha variant became very dominant. And then,、uh, of course, we know the the delta emerged in India and quickly spread to Europe and U.S. and the rest of the world. And that is so dominant right now,、uh, accounting for. Way over ninety percent of the viruses in the population today, and it's likely the next variant will come from、uh, the Delta virus. And you would say, well, where? I think it's wherever、uh, there is under vaccination or no vaccination.、Uh, in such places, the virus will find those persons and will spread. And as the virus spread, it will replicate. Uh, and when it replicates, it will make mutations, and certain variants will emerge.、Uh, and and it's pretty clear that these variants emerge for one of two reasons. One is it's more easily transmitted from person to person, and the second one is that it could evade our antibodies. And and for the first, the best example is Delta. Which、uh, has been estimated to be a hundred percent more transmissible than the original、uh, strain that came out of Wuhan. In terms of、uh, antibody resistance, we know that、uh, Delta, for example, is about five times more resistant than the original strain, and the Beta variant is actually ten times more resistant. However, that variant doesn't seem to be as transmissible. So we really have to be、uh, concerned about、uh, places where there is under vaccination and the the virus is allowed to、uh, replicate and mutate. 那就博士，您刚才提到的这个数字听起来蛮吓人的。就每一次在病毒变异之后的传染的速度啊，我成倍数的增加。所以就目前现阶段的这些疫苗，我们我们现在打在身上的这些疫苗，对于变异的病毒来说，还是有很强的保护力吗？或者是说，生技医疗界会不会接下来还想要再开发什么样的疫苗来去应应病毒不断的变异 ？So the The protection against some of the variants like beta and delta、uh, is clearly lower than the protection against the original virus,、um, and and that's been shown in a number of studies.、Uh, but the the some level of protection still exists,、um, and so I think the the idea is to continue to vaccinate the population as much as possible. And keep the virus replication down, and therefore,、uh, the chance of a nasty variant emerging would be smaller. And then, of course, the scientists are busy working on、uh, vac- next generation vaccines. Some of them are directed to the to the Delta variant,、uh, and also we are all working on、uh, vaccines and antibodies that would attack. All the viruses in this family, including SARS-1 from 20 almost 20 years ago, including the COVID-19 and those viruses that exist in bats. 
。所以一方面，我们还是看到科学界持续的还是有研究的进度来针对不同的变种的病毒、哦。但同时，我们看到各国的政策也都开始做些做一些不要调整。很多国家慢慢的都已经开放他们的国境了。现在说只有百分之七左右的国家是属于 red line country、red line border， 包含台湾也是在内，采取的政策目标跟方向是不大一样的。那么有一部分呢？就是想要走的是所谓清零政策 o c l e a n 那另外就是 coexist 跟病毒能够共存。就目前，不是你来观察全世界这整个疫苗发展的状态，还有包含了整个疫情哦，现在的这个比较趋缓的趋这个呃这个趋势之下，您来看，像台湾现在好像还是比较走的要清零的这样的政策，是不是慢慢的也必须做一些调整跟转向呢？您的评估大概是怎么样？ Yes, I, I think first of all, I should say Taiwan really did a fine job at in controlling the pandemic as it first came out.、Uh, so its early success became、uh, a model for rest of the world, and in fact, Taiwan was highly praised by other countries.、Uh, very much、uh, unlike U.S., which did a terrible job in the beginning. Uh, and and of course we all know Taiwan kept the cases down, and the hospitalization and death to a minimum,、uh, and that sort of zero COVID policy with very strict quarantine has served Taiwan very well in the in in throughout 2020,、uh, and and it's pretty much、uh, similar to what、uh, mainland China does and and what Hong Kong is doing. And up till recently, very similar to Australia, Singapore, New Zealand.、Um, the question is whether this is sustainable in the long term.、Um, there, the situation in 2021 is not the same as 2020, and and I think you know the world is striving to return to normal and to open up.、Um, and now we have a lot of tools at our disposal. We have lots of technological development now,、uh, with vaccines, with antibodies, with drugs, and and all of these、uh, are highly protective.、Uh, for the vaccines, we already talked about the fact that they could reduce disease、uh, by fifty percent, all the way up to ninety-five percent, and the antibodies and drugs、uh, could reduce hospitalization and death. By up to ninety percent, so we really don't need to fear the virus as much as we did last year.、Uh, we have the technological developments have allow us to treat treat COVID like maybe flu.、Uh, it's not going to go away, and we have to learn to live with the virus.、Uh, it's going to be endemic. That is, it's going to hang around, but we hope with our tools,、uh, it won't do so much harm. So I think in in the U.S., we're certainly uh, 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 moving toward uh, normal. Uh, it's it's pretty much、uh, open. Even Australia, New Zealand, Singapore are doing away with the z- zero COVID policy. Uh, and and in New York, we're returning to normal despite having 1,000 cases per day. You know, the, Taiwan would be shocked by that. But yet, I don't. I, life seems to be uh, okay uh, because we don't fear the virus as much now.、Mm. Uh, and 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 so it's important for Taiwan to adopt vaccine and antibodies and drugs as quickly as possible. And so that's an aspect that I would say the U.S. has done a better job、uh, than Taiwan. 嗯嗯，所以重点还是大家在心态上面调整哦，看待这个疫情，在二零呃二零二零年跟现在二零二一年应该有一个不同的眼光哦。毕竟已经有了这么多的疫苗啊，然后大家开始体内产生了抗体啊，甚至有更多的治疗药物。所以刚才博士不断强调说，我们不要害怕哦。讲到现在纽约人的生活也慢慢的恢复到正常。我在昨天还播新闻，大家已经开始在跑马拉松了。那所以博士您来看哦，到了二零二二年，包含科学。世界目前研究的进度，我们可以怎么样展望二零二二年？这个病毒真的就是完全不会造成威胁了吗 ？I I think 
I think we'll see continuing progress on drug development. You know, we have now three small molecule drugs. We have a, a antibodies from at least three companies already approved, uh, authorized for emergency use and, and multiple vaccines. And I think we need to move to next generation drug and vaccine development. And that's already in the works. And so the situation will only improve and, and, and we, we just need to buy time uh, for science to, to take its course. 是，所以博士不断的提到了 next generation， 就是在下一个世代、次世代的疫苗的研发，现在科学界正在进行的。那也有另外一个说法，就是以我们现在目前有的疫苗，我们来打第三剂的加强针。其实，在美国现在就是打第三剂的加强针，但这两个好像是变成不同的策略。一个就是现有的疫苗，我们再多打加强针，或每年都打几剂。那另外一个就是我们再开发更好的次世代的疫苗。不是您，您可以带我们稍微了解一下这两个策略跟跟这两个不同的方法，到底有没有哪一个比较好，或者是科学界现在比较着重在哪个方面？那对未来我们面对这个病毒的时候，是不是会让我们有一个可能有不一样的一个状况又会出现 ？I think based on the studies that that the scientific community has performed, it's pretty clear we have to do both. We have to make sure、uh, we apply the Current vaccine, the best we can, and that is we already know that there is waning of antibody responses following even the best vaccines.、Uh, after six months, the the antibody levels, particularly the neutralizing antibodies, zhong he kang ti, are are rather low,、uh, and so and and that is associated with a decrease in vaccine protection. And when you boost, the antibody levels are restored, and vaccine efficacy increases once again. And so,、uh, so it it really、uh, argues for、uh, booster shots for a lot of people, particularly those who are elderly and at high risk.、Uh, and also, if if the Taiwan population has received largely、uh, Astra, AstraZeneca and Galdwan vaccines. Then and and should the mRNA vaccines from Pfizer and Moderna become available,、uh, they should be used to boost.、Uh, I think it's pretty clear that one will get a a very robust antibody response,、um, and and that would、uh, increase the level of protection. I think unless Taiwan vaccinate widely with good vaccine.、Uh, It, it's very difficult to reopen. 所以博士，在你的意见来说，因为在台湾有一个说法是第三季的加强针，主要是针对高风险，或您刚才也特别提到是年龄比较大的这些民众。不过就您的专业的看法，会觉得说，其实第三季不只是针对他们，对于每一个民众来说，其实都还是有它的必要性吗 ？Yes, based on our studies, I think、uh, the decline in antibody and decline in protection occurs in everybody. Of course, those who are younger and healthier、uh, could be infected, but they don't go to the hospital or die at the high rate. So the priority certainly should be given to the seniors and to、uh, people with underlying conditions. But in the in the long run, I think if we're going to control this,、uh, the booster shot、uh, should be more widely administered. Of course,、uh, that is if the supply is there. But I know the supply is. Is increasing very, very rapidly, and there should be enough good vaccines、uh, for for the whole world、uh, throughout next year. For the whole world, for the next year, 这真的是一个非常好的目标，在明年大家可以来期待的。那在台湾，我们除了讨论呃第三季之外，现在大家讨论非常多的就是混打。我们都知道，博士您过去在研究这个 S 病毒的时候，讲这个鸡尾酒疗法，其实它就是混合性的。那这一次呢，针对 COVID-19 这样的病毒，您怎么样来看混打？在台湾这上面的讨论也很多，好像很多研究数据也证实说，确实混打的保护力又更好一些。那在此，为什么混打？都是 A Z 要打第一剂 ，M R N 要做第二剂呢？它的道理是什么 ？I think mixing and matching is already accepted in the U S. and is authorized by the F D A.、Uh, 
So a lot of mixing and matching of vaccines is already taking place. I know that Taiwan hasn't gotten there yet, but in terms of Taiwan's population receiving a lot of AZ vaccine, we, I've said earlier, its antibody responses are poor compared to the mRNA vaccines. So I would urge those, particularly those in the high risk group or in, in, in the uh, elderly population to get boosted with one of the mRNA vaccines. I know Taiwan has received Moderna vaccine and Pfizer vaccine has been purchased through private entities. And so that's going to be available. The, our immune system doesn't really care how you deliver the product uh, to, the, to the immune cells, right? So the mRNA or the J&J AstraZeneca vaccine, they're just different delivery vehicles, but the product that is shown to the immune system is essentially the same. So there's really no huge problem with mixing and matching at all. And uh, all the experimental data uh, support that. The, the AZ shot by itself um, does not induce a very good response, uh, and even when you give the booster. Uh, we have studied a lot of such cases, and they are clearly not as good as the Moderna Pfizer. So if somebody got an AZ, uh, we, would, we would ask them to get a Moderna or Pfizer shot, um, and, and maybe even two. Um, uh, we, we have no experience uh, with the Gaudouin uh, vaccine, of course, here in the US. Uh, but um, uh, even those who received Johnson & Johnson vaccine, uh, which I guess is not used much in Taiwan, uh, we would advise uh, many of them to get the MR, mRNA uh, boost as well. So, Joe Bosin Mutin, Zay and Joseph can now true like the Suju, or Joe Haisi, MRA, the Bahuli can't say to each other. So, even in Dala AZ, Jis Dala Liang, Ji, Haisi, who Jay, Kui, the Hua, Zai Buddha, the Dissanji Jachan, so she sends MRA, Jang, the Buton, the E Miao. Then, if I'm here, we say, Bia Dodo Tolan, she said, E Miao Buffen, or Joe, she found Joe, you found Jong Jen, who she you found, took a Si Wang Lu. Not in why you go Tolan, dear, who Benson, so we won't send the E Jin, she children, drunk, Kong, Zong Yang, your Yao Wu, like Zo Ju Liao. Just found me. 的研究，这现在国际上已经有一些药厂是已经有研究开发出来的新药。不过我们知道，其实去年不是您的团队也有开发出、研究出这个有九个抗新冠病毒抗体，也授权给台湾的一家中誉公司要来做合作。但后续可能是他们在计算开发的时间呐、啊，要要经过了很多的过程呐、啊，那还有投入的一些资本，最后认为可能放在商业机转上面会会没有商机。啊，好像这个计划现在是已经停止了，所以也想要了解一下，在新药开发过程当中，其实一般会碰到最大的困难跟挑战是什么？那目前这个部分的研发进度又到了什么样的一个阶段呢 ？Yes,、uh, I mentioned earlier that、uh, working on monoclonal antibodies against、uh, COVID is our major area of research, and、uh, we develop. A bunch of them in early 2020, and we develop additional ones、uh, this year.、Uh, one of the earlier ones uh, was uh, licensed from Columbia to Zhongyu, and and they put it into development. However,、uh, from a from many perspective,、uh, Zhongyu was a late comer compared to U.S. companies. Um, and 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 so there's a pretty a tough competition from companies such as Lilly, Regeneron, and、uh, GlaxoSmithKline、uh, in the U.S.、Uh, but I think the biggest concern for Zhongyu was how to do the uh, development uh, in a in in a competitive way uh, because. More and more, the good treatments are available. So, can you actually do a study comparing your antibody with placebo? Because、uh, asking people to take placebo when they're already 
proven drugs uh, and antibodies available is, uh, is an ethical challenge. In addition, uh, if you don't have placebo, then you have to uh, compare your drug with a proven drug. And that automatically says it's going to be hard and it's going to require a lot more patience. Uh, it's going to require a longer timeline and increased costs. And in the midst of uh, a shrinking market, because vaccines are now being rolled out in such huge numbers. And then we don't know what variants, uh, new variants will emerge to confound the situation. So it's, it's a business decision. So Zhongyi then uh, relinquished the program and invested in another company called RenBio. In, it's a biotech in the US. And that product is now uh, made uh, under uh, good manufacturing uh, practices and is entering uh, uh, phase one clinical trial next year. But also that, is, that company is now going to focus on, on the niche market. That is, uh, could that antibody be delivered in a new way that will stay in the system, say for a year? Uh, and that will protect people who cannot, who do not respond to vaccines. There are uh, maybe a few percent of the population that do not respond to vaccines. They're largely patients with, uh, with other conditions on chemotherapy or other immunosuppression drugs. And, and so they don't respond to vaccines and, and an antibody like that could protect uh, such individuals. You may have heard a couple of weeks ago, uh, the former US uh, Secretary of State, Colin Powell, uh, died uh, from COVID. Uh, and he did not respond to vaccine because he has uh, cancer and uh, was on treatment. So there's a niche market for that. But I think in terms of what we're doing now is we're seeing if we could develop uh, antibody and vaccines that would cover all of these viruses. Uh, COVID, SARS-1, and the animal viruses that uh, exist in the, in, uh, in the wild and may someday come to uh, infect us. We have to assume that coronaviruses will come again. We already seen three such uh, outbreaks in 20 years. Surely more will come. And we have to have uh, vaccines that act broader on this family of viruses. So this is the so-called multi-generation next generation vaccine, right? Right. OK. 不是您曾经在过去的访问当中有提到哦，说这一次疫情对于全球的公共卫生来说是一记警钟，好像帮大家都上了一课。所以您可以帮我们做一个总结嘛？就从二零二零年的年底一直到今年二零二一年一整年，我们看到这个疫情在这个全球造成了这么广泛的影响，我们到底学到了一些什么样的教训呢？ Uh, I, uh, of course, we learn a lot scientifically about uh, these viruses, and we learn a lot about how quickly we could develop te technology uh, to come up with drugs and antibodies and vaccines. Uh, the speed with which all of these things have been developed over the, over the last 18 months is truly unprecedented and truly amazing. Uh, I think the overall lesson particularly from the Taiwan perspective, uh, is I think Taiwan was experienced after SARS in 2002, 2003. And that prepared uh, the, uh, the country well to respond to COVID. And, uh, and the, the lesson I would say is, uh, do not rest on that early success. Uh, anticipate what science uh, will offer. And that's why I said earlier, the perspective in 2020 is different from that of 2021. And I think uh, in retrospect now, if we look back, uh, what could Taiwan do better? Well, I would say be an earlier adopter of vaccines um, uh, in the same way that uh, Israel has done, for example. 
I think Taiwan was relatively speaking slow in doing so. And, and, and therefore now it will have to be slower in opening up. Um, you know, I, I think Taiwan like Israel has a great deal of purchasing power and could have one way or another been more aggressive in that. So that's one lesson that, that I certainly uh, took away from, from, from these observations. I would say that um, we, we still need to uh, continue to invest in pandemic preparedness. There will be more. It may not be a coronavirus, but it will be some other pathogen, particularly those that are trans transmitted via the respiratory uh, system and, and, and are easily passed from person to person. And the, the lesson is, you know, this is one of the largest threat to global security. Uh, it's not, you know, it's up there with climate change. Uh, and and, and uh, every nation has to be uh, well prepared and, and be willing to contribute to, uh, to that effort. 所以，正如博士刚才您有提到，台湾这一次的反应可能比起其他国家，在最刚开始稍微快了一点，就是过去曾经有过像 SARS 这样的经验，以至于我们这一次有了 COVID-19 的经验之后，面对下一次不知道从哪突然又冒出来的可能不一样的病毒。可能又造成了一个 pandemic 的时候，我们因为有这一次的经验，或许也会帮助 global wide 全世界大家在共同面对的时候，有了经验，下次可能会做得更好，就对了。There, I, I think in the U.S. we certainly have learned a lot, and and if you look at what the the U.S. government, particularly NIH, the National Health Institute, is doing, we are preparing. For a pandemic caused by many, many different viruses, bacteria, and and other uh, pathogens, so um, this is what uh, what every country with with uh, technical capabilities should be doing, because this is one of the uh, uh, biggest threat to our uh, overall health and security. 那就这一波的 pandemic 来说，现在好像已经有呃一些研究单位开始在评估哦，会有第一批可以脱离这一次 pandemic 的国家，还有可能可以脱离的时间。像路透他们就访问了十几间主要的一个研究单位，他们就认为点名了像美国呀、英国、葡萄牙跟印度这几个国家。那主要是因为疫苗接种率蛮高的，然后又有自然免疫力的形成。认为这会是第一批脱离大流行的国家。那博士，您的看法？接下来全球的疫情到底会走到什么样的阶段开开始趋缓？因为您刚才也有提到，这中间还有我们进入到秋冬这个季节的因素，还有包含其实我们现在在美国 ，even 都已经呃疫苗打了这么多了，但还是有蛮多的确诊的病例在每天都会出现。所以真的就我们可以开始想说，它真的就可以走到整个疫情的尾端了吗？ I think these places you mentioned, like the U.S., Britain, India, uh, it's true they have been vaccinating uh, more widely than Taiwan has. But these are also places that suffer a great deal and, and endure a great deal of devastation uh, due to extensive spread of the virus. So there's a there's a the there was a high price already paid, but but that certainly uh, serve as motivation to get vaccination and, and treatment going. And, and now, as I said earlier, and I, I will repeat myself here, but, but we, we now have the means to convert a disease with high death rate into a d disease with low death rate, almost flu-like, and, and this, I think, will allow us to adopt a, 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 a lifestyle that's closer to normal and, and keep the damage low uh, and, uh, and reopen and return uh, to some semblance of normalcy. And I think that's uh, what we're all shooting for. This virus won't disappear completely. Uh, it will hang around for years to come, uh, 
but I think I think we will be able to manage. I think the outlook for the long term is good because of the available new tools. So, 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 一个历程还是好的、哦，而且真的，我觉得博士在今天访谈当中不断地提醒我们大家不要害怕，因为疫情走到现在这个阶段，科学界的努力之下，已经把这个疫情可能导致的高死亡率以及高重症的状况，现在整个局势是基本上已经完全扭转过来了。那同时还有不断的新的疫苗、新的药物持续都在开发、哦，包含呃在台湾哦，我们民众也会接种的台湾我们自己制的国产高端疫苗，刚才博士也大概有提到一点点哦，目前我们高端疫苗已经是获选参加 WHO 的一个团结试验疫苗计划，所以 WHO 就会资助来帮高端进入到接下来的三期试验。不过整体来说，在国际上哦，好像高端疫苗疫苗基本上还没有被这么普遍的认可。那不就不晓得现在在国际上，尤其是在科学界，怎么样来评价台湾国产这一支疫苗，以及在未来高端疫苗真的能够进入到国际市场的可能性？ Yeah, I I have no firsthand experience with the Gaudan vaccine.、Um, I, I have read the paper that's published on the phase two study of the Gaudan vac vaccine,、uh, and I would say that、uh, you know obviously with those phase two results, you should move on to a phase three study. I understand that's very difficult to do in Taiwan. Uh, given the low infection rate right now, so it has to be done elsewhere,、uh, and WHO has、uh, agreed to evaluate that along with many other virus vaccines,、um, and 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 it's it's not entirely clear how and where,、uh, so we we need to learn more about those details,、um, but I I would say that comparing the、uh, report. Of the Zonghe、uh, Kangti、uh, neutralizing antibody levels,、uh, I would say that it's not particularly impressive.、Uh, it's probably on par with AstraZeneca.、Uh, so that would suggest to me it's not likely to to have the high protection rate that the mRNA vaccines confer.、Um, I'm a, I'm a little surprised that despite lack of phase three data, the the vaccine is already authorized for emergency use, which is、uh, pretty unusual.、Uh, that would not happen in the U.S. or、uh, Europe or or Japan.、Uh, but but I'm sure that's a decision. That's a hard decision that folks in in Taiwan had to make.、Um, I I would say. Uh, the the path ahead is quite difficult、uh, to show、uh, protection in in a phase three trial. WHO is comparing so many vaccines, so、uh, where are they going to be doing the study? And is it still ethical, as I mentioned earlier, to have a placebo control? Because we already know that we have highly efficacious vaccines, and is it Ethical to give people placebo, and without placebo, it's really tough to show your vaccine works. Then you have to compare your vaccine to vac other vaccines that have proven efficacy, and then you're comparing it with something good. And therefore, the the power of the study needs to be greater, and the number of subjects enrolled would have to be larger. That would drive up the costs,、uh, take much longer to enroll.、Um, And and all that in the in the face of、uh, available proven products, it's going to be pretty tough.、Uh, but I would say, based on the data I've seen、uh, so far, those who receive the Medigen uh, vaccine uh, probably should get a boost、uh, with the mRNA vaccine、uh, if that's available. 
不是刚才非常中肯提出自己的看法哦，跟观察。不刚好我觉得听到一个蛮重要的点，就是说，其实博士也也,也能够理解，在台湾，这从台湾的角度要开发自己的国产疫苗，在政策上面的困难度，以及为什么必须要这样做。但实际上面对到国际这么这么多的这个平台，都同样的一起在开发，这其实竞争上是非常的激烈。而我们同时也看到，像这一次 COVID-19 的病毒。它必须要全球一起合作，整个国际上一起合作来 fight 这个病毒。所以，就整个国际市场以及跟世界接轨的角度来说，在这一次包含了博士您来观察个台湾国产的高端疫苗在整个研发的过程，还有或者甚至台湾整个在防疫的阶段跟国际上之间合作，您觉得台湾本身哦，在生计、医疗相关的面向产业，或是政府在政策面，如果说真的。更希望能够跟世界接轨的话，我们接下来应该要做一些什么样的改变或调整吗 ？Well, I, I know for a fact that Taiwan has tried very hard、yes. to advance its biotech and pharmaceutical industry.、Uh, Taiwan has the financial resources to do it,、um, but you know, Taiwan is small,、uh, doesn't have the critical mass. Of scientists and and other、uh, researchers in the area, and it doesn't have a long history of a pharmaceutical industry to to build on, and so it's it's very hard. And、uh, I know that many in Taiwan now, for many generations, have tried. Generations of leaders have tried to stimulate this uh, sector uh, uh, without a lot of success. I I must say. Uh, but that's because the challenge is so tough,、uh, and also Taiwan is very good in medicine. It's very strong, but it's not、uh, a world leader in basic research, and and particularly in in basic medical research. And so、um, it, you know, the biotech and pharmaceutical industry generally、uh, spin out of uh, academic uh, laboratories. And there's just so few of them in Taiwan compared to、uh, places such as the U.S. So it's it's hard, but the government has to keep trying. It has to invest, and I think it has to be bold、uh, in in its investment.、Uh, cannot say that、uh, I'm just going to invest a little bit. I, I think the model for the you know the semiconductor industry is there. Taiwan was very very successful. Is now a world leader. And that's because back then the government was bold, and then there was a large critical mass of people、uh, who were recruited back to Taiwan to launch that industry、uh, so successfully. I think you know、uh, many of us have tried to think about how to do that、uh, with the biotech sector, but so far、uh, nothing has worked very well. But that doesn't mean we we should stop trying.、Uh, and and the other thing I would say is.、Uh, Don't let politics get in the way,、uh, and, and and we have seen again Taiwan government supporting、uh, certain companies, and then the you know when there's a change in leadership,、uh, uh, that company is then trashed,、uh, and that's like you know ruining your own child, and that's not a formula for success. 真的非常谢谢博士哦，这是从跨海来的观察，给我们非常中肯的建议。那节目的最后，博士刚才不停不停的告诉我们观众朋友，就说不要害怕，不要害怕，我们要学习怎么样跟这个病毒共存，然后恢复到正常的生活。那在最后，除了这方面的建议之外，不晓得博士最后一点点时间，还会能不能够再给我们一些其他，就面对我们未来在疫情可能会出现的变化呀，我们应该要怎么样来看待啊，或者给我们一些什么样的鼓励 ？Well, I, I, I think you know, I'm very proud of how Taiwan handled the early part of this pandemic.、Um, And and many of my U.S. colleague、uh, have, you know, given me praises、uh, for Taiwan's effort.、Uh, but I I think we are learning that that、uh, Taiwan cannot rest on that. I think it should strive to return to normal. This lockdown、uh, mentality cannot 
sustain for much longer. Uh, it, I think we, we all need to return to our normal life and, and we got to figure out a way. And now we have really tools at our disposal. And, and now for Taiwan, the issue is how to access the tools and not only the tools, but the best ones, because I think the Taiwan people would deserve that. Uh, you know, I know growing up in Taiwan, my parents did not raise me to be a C student. They wanted me to be an A student. And I think when we go for vaccine and drugs, we should go for the best uh, and, and protect our population the best we can. 非常感谢博士哦，抽空那么宝贵的时间来到我们 TVS 的大师讲堂。我觉得今天跟博士之间对话，真的比较客观的角度哦，来帮我们能够更多的、清楚的看到现在我们台湾还能够做什么，我们应该撇出一些什么样的干扰，好好的思考。在接下来，很快就要进入到二零二二年了。如果这个病毒不会消失的话，那我们的日子应该要怎么过呢？今天。博士这段话，我相信大家心里头都已经有了答案，大家都可以来好好思考了。谢谢博士，谢谢您，谢谢。